Emily and I have this collaboration between a physicist and a dancer, so we've thought a lot about the interaction between these two disciplines. And there's a recent discovery in my own field of the last particle of the standard model in particle physics. So basically our theory that encompasses everything. This is the last piece that was missing. And we think we have it. It, it really looks like we have it. No one can talk about the Higgs boson with their hands in their pockets. There is an incredibly rich gestural life that emerges with each of these with scientists without fail as soon as they began to describe the Higgs, to articulate what it does, to um, call upon vivid, real world, macro world metaphors, they had to use their hands. CERN is the premier high energy physics laboratory in Europe. The equivalent in the United States is Fermilab in terms of the, the center for where a lot of high energy physics research is done. So we visited the detector, we took photographs down there, Kike took photographs, and, and after that, the next day, um, we did interviews with seven physicists. And this is one of the gems of information or unexpected, um, awe-inspiring things that came out of the research over this overarching project. We asked them to talk about explain the Higgs boson for a, a broad public. And if they wished, they could imagine their PowerPoint and, and gesture accordingly. When I interact even with people in my discipline, our own understanding and conceptualization of it, I think, is, is very challenging. It really gets at this problem of macroscopic world and microscopic particle physics special relativity we have to worry about, you know, speeds approaching the speed of light. We have to worry about quantum mechanics. And those just aren't realms where a macroscopic brain living in a macroscopic world can go really easily, particularly without mathematics. That challenge of communicating and even understanding and interacting with physics at, at that level, given the macroscopic world that we're in, was so familiar to me because I had taught this co-taught this physics and dance class with Emily, where we were dealing with that challenge of approaching modern physics in the realm of dance, where you're just stuck there. And so I think the thinking for me and Emily was, let's take this problem that we have, or this challenge of having these two disciplines interact at that boundary where we're kind of stuck and make it, you know, make it that much more challenging by, by lumping the Higgs boson on, on top of it. We also really believe that there are, are richer possibilities than simply art translating science for a broader audience. And what we're really interested in this project and where and how and when we'll get there, um, you know, it's probably going to be a longer arc than June when the Reintegrate Initiative ends. But what we're most interested in is the kind of cross-conversation that can happen and how can um, art, how can choreographic practice, how can these ideas of aesthetics, when in close dialogue with science and with physics, lend back new metaphors or useful concepts through which scientists may then begin to dream and imagine and conceive of new discoveries. The Higgs boson was mathematically thought up, but mathematically imagined a figment of um, Peter Higgs' imagination in the 1960s, which to me is incredible. There, that there is the act of an artist. Um, and then it took 50 years for the physics community to build the necessary technology and to meticulously accumulate the research needed to prove um, what in its origins was a, a real leap of the imagination.